This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to the Human Animal Connection Show, where we believe we can communicate with all animals. Join us as we explore the 33 principles and healing methods of the Human Animal Connection. As animal lovers, we know that you share our commitment to making the world a kinder place for all creatures. Together, let's embrace the transformative healing power of the Human Animal Connection. Hi everyone, it's Jeannie Joseph from the Human Animal Connection, and I'm so glad you've joined us for this podcast. I'm going to be speaking with a good new friend. I've recently met her, and her name is Lisa Wagner, and she is the head, I guess the creator and founder of Cold Nose College. And if you'd like to learn more about her, that's coldnosecollege.com. And she has been a trainer extraordinaire for a very long time. I even heard about you when I lived in Hawaii. My, Did she really, Jeannie? Yes, yes, my mentor, because when I was in my dog training program, which I had to do because we were doing a prison dog program, um, she mentioned you, that you were had a wonderful online program. So anyway, Maria Salarki, I don't know if you remember her, but. Oh, yeah, the name is familiar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So great. And one of the things that we're going to be talking about today is Lisa's wonderful program, the original rocket recall protocol. And this is a incredibly important for any dog person who shares their life with a dog, the ability to get your dog to come back to you when you need them to, especially in an emergency situation or anything that's urgent. And it's not always easy. As as many dog people will tell you, it's not automatic. <laughs> it's not so easy. So we're going to learn a little bit about how we can uh, get the peace of mind of knowing that the dog will return to us when we need them to and discover the important training tools that will help us reach this goal. So, Lisa, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me here. I'm, I'm thrilled to chat with you about recall and, you know, anything else dogs. Um, yeah. yeah, we have five hours, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so tell us just briefly about your training program, and then we're going to spend the time talking about recall. So great. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the the training that we do is all positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. So we are reinforcing behaviors that we like so we get more of them and managing um, with enrichment or other tools, you know, to prevent those unwanted behaviors from being reinforced. Mm -hmm. um, it was a death of a dog that propelled me into training. And uh, a couple of dogs later, um, I realized at a play group that when a client said, how did you call her away from the other dogs playing to you those multiple times during the session? So it's easy. You train it. And mm -hmm. I thought, how do, well, how do I train it? Right. I've been successful teaching it. How do I train it? So I started writing out the protocol, what we do, how we do, filmed a DVD about 10 years ago, now streaming video, but always wanted to put it in book form. Mm -hmm. People like holding a book. Yeah. So um, I put it in into a book and um, it's been successful with the dog trainers and also, of course, guardians, which is who I originally intended the book for. Mm -hmm. OK, so um, tell us about why recall starts with the human animal bond, the connection between you and the animal. Where, why is that step one? Don't we if you if you love animals and if you love your dogs, don't we all aspire to have a deep trusting relationship? Mm -hmm. So if you create a bond with your dog or any animal that's under your roof, um, it strengthens the communication between to, between you. It develops trust between you. What yes. happens with trust? If we trust someone and we have a bond with them, then we want to be with one another. Mm -hmm. And so, yay, that's wonderful for every part of our life with our dogs. But if you want your dog to come back to you, especially in an emergency situation, they must trust you in order to be the kind, benevolent, wonderful person you are when they return to you and not worry about what other consequences may be. Mm -hmm. So using positive reinforcement, reinforcing training steps along the way is going to help build that bond not only while you're training, but it's a longer lasting bond. You can revitalize your relationship by training and recall in this way. And you must might just save your dog's life. Excellent. So we're not just looking at recall as a kind of uh, blind obedience. I don't know if I could use that word, but we're looking at it as really uh, a way of calibrating and perfecting and deepening our relationship. 
Absolutely. I want my dog when I call, you know, I, I train my dog and the protocol train helps people understand how to train their dog to have a immediate turn on the dime rocket recall. Mm -hmm. So that you practice it, you've done all the, the training steps, you've reinforced it so heavily that when you do call, that dog doesn't have to think about what to do, it becomes automatic. And then they turn on a dime and start running to you with glee on their face. Yes. Because of what's going to ha happen when they get to you, you mm -hmm. become the reinforcer. Right. So the reward is connection. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you're perfect. The human animal connection. How right. spot on can that be? Exactly right. Yeah. So it's a very different model that we're talking about here than, say, maybe our grandparents were taught about using fear or dominance to control dogs, which may have sh worked in the short term, but all, you know, I believe damaged the bond. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we want our dogs, it, everything in my book and all the training we do focuses on keeping the dog and the client feeling physically and emotionally safe during mm -hmm. the learning process. Because none of us can learn if we don't feel safe. Right. So creating a safe environment and then breaking training down into small enough achievable steps sets the dog and the client up for success. Mm -hmm. Well, that's such an important thing you just said that I want to drill down a little bit into it because I, I, I see that when I work with the shelter dogs that if there isn't a sense of safety, you can forget about teaching anything. <laughs> so, and of course, shelter is a very stressful environment, but what do you do that contributes to safety and what should people avoid that takes away from safety? So let's a just... Good question. So first of all, as you mentioned, what I call old fashioned training, that old obedience type of training mm -hmm. that our grandparents may have, may have used. Um, I'm using food to reinforce mm -hmm. and I am moving my body in such a way to not cause stress to the dog. Right. So I'm using training techniques that, you know, increase buy-in and the dog enjoys the process. And I'm giving the dog, I'm meeting the dog's needs with whatever those may be at the moment. So I'm reading dog body language. Mm -hmm. It's really awesome for guardians to gain a little bit of understanding about how dogs display, um, how they show their, through their body, what they're feeling. We don't yes. know for sure, but we, you know, over the mm -hmm. decades, we've studied dogs and understand that a tuck tail means the dog is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So I'm watching the dog to make sure that anything I'm doing, anything the client is doing, interacting with the dog creates comfort for the dog versus stress. Okay. It can so, be as simple. It can be as simple as I'm not stepping into a dog into their space. Right. I'm inviting them to come to me. Exactly right. Yeah. We let them come towards you. And we're always observing <clears throat> if we do something, what is the dog's response to it? Are they showing us signs that they feel more safe and trusting or less safe and trusting? And it could be just as simple as, you know, you were flapping your hands, you know, just to make a point, <laughs> you know, when you're talking mm -hmm. to another, you know, another person in the room. But that dog is like, oh, my God, what is that? What I have to do? What does it mean? Is this good? Is this bad? <laughs> you know? so what, what's important to understand if you understand learning theory um, and if you don't, classical conditioning, you know, we're all as, as animals, human or dog, we're developing emotional feelings about any situation we're in. Mm -hmm. We want to help our dogs while we're training with positive reinforcement, reinforcing behaviors we like. We want them to have that wonderful feeling of, oh, I feel safe. This is fun. Um, and if the dog ever, maybe we train a little bit too long, if they give us body language that says, you know, I think I'm done now. We stop. Right. It's giving the animal choice mm -hmm. during the training process. Yeah. Just that's... because I want to train doesn't mean my dog wants to train that day. Yeah, exactly. And just like us, they could have good days, bad days, mood wise, or their tummy hurts or whatever it is, right? That just yeah. like we do, right? So it's really exactly. uh, so important that we're in sync in, in the way ballroom dancers are in sync. They're paying attention to each other's. Perfect. I, and I love that because I, I say all the time, I, if, if Brad, my husband's a professional dog trainer too, mm -hmm. and if he has worked with a dog, one of our dogs that I train more frequently, mm -hmm. then it's a, I, we always say it's a different dance partner. So right. he moves a little bit different. He might just deliver his food a little bit differently, but it's, so it's not quite the same. So it is very much like being in uh, a dance team, being in sync. 
Yeah, that's excellent. Okay. So what is one of the biggest speed bumps people might uh, experience when they're working on recall? I'm going to give you two. The first okay. one is not realizing it's a learned behavior, just like anything we teach our dogs. That is so important because people think, you know, I call my dog. Why doesn't he come? And sometimes he comes and sometimes he doesn't. But, you know, like they, they assume that it's going to be natural, just like they assume fetch is going to be natural. And fetch isn't natural to all dogs. And most people use the word come. And dogs yeah. don't come with an English software package installed. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't know what that word means. So you know, just realizing, you know, need, realizing it's a learned behavior. And then secondly, um, when the dog gains some skill at home, Mm -hmm. not understanding how to add in distractions in minuscule levels, progressive right. systematic way of adding in those distractions. And that's what my book does is it does is break down those steps. Mm -hmm. There are focus and attention exercises that are, are very achievable, very, very close. We learn to do things inside first before we ever take it outside in certain parts of the yard. It's systematic and progressive. So what most people do is train it well in their yard and they have a nice off off leash, somewhat long distance, maybe from the back of your yard to your front and expect that to work at the park mm -hmm. <laughs> with so many distractions. You right. can get there, but you just have to set your dog up for success by right. training in those increments. And mm -hmm. if your, your dog ever isn't successful, it's only because the, the dog hasn't learned it yet. Mm -hmm. You just merely go back to where you were last successful in training and start again. Yeah, I think that's a, um, a common mistake is that people assume that the dog can generalize understanding of the word come in the backyard means that they're going to understand come in the parking lot or in the, you know, on a, on a path on a, you know, in the woods or something. And, and that's not necessarily so. And so what and you're then, talking Then the yeah. bond, Jeannie, the relationship, um, Brad and I have been married almost 40 years. Mm -hmm. We have really good, loving, strong bond and relationship. And if we're at a big party with people all over the place, talking and chatting, and I'm engaged with someone listening to a conversation, then my goodness, he calls, he says, hey, Lisa, I'm probably going to hear his voice. What? If mm -hmm. that's a stranger, a stranger's mm -hmm. voice that might say, hey, Lisa, Mm -hmm. I, I may not even hear it. Right. right. So the, the strength of that bond and the time spent together, um, you know, enhances not only trust, but communication and, and hearing. <laughs> yes, exactly right. Um, so let's tell, tell us a little bit about the tools that, we, that you use when you're training recall. Can you kind of walk us through? I know it's a bigger program, but maybe just give us a little taste. Yeah. So the, the tools that I use are um, a front clip harness or any kind of harness, really. It can be back clip or front, front clip, but a harness. Mm -hmm. Because if the dog pulls at all, I don't yeah. want to have the leash on a collar because it mm -hmm. could damage their esophagus or their trachea. Mm -hmm. So a harness, a six-foot leash, and a long line. So a long line is really just um, a longer leash and something that's 15 feet or longer. Mm -hmm. You're going to be using the long line when you're, you start training more distance. Okay. So you're moving from one tool to the next, the six foot leash to the longer line before you ever think about um, off leash work. Okay. Because we want to prevent while we're training the behavior we want, the dog returning to us, we want to prevent the unwanted behavior of running off after a squirrel. Mm -hmm. So having your dog on leash while you're training is that management tool. It keeps the dog from um, um, running off after things and getting reinforced by that chase, mm -hmm. that squirrel, that other okay. dog. So, so, you know, a lot of what you're talking about is really focusing the dog's attention, you know, so that they are, you know, they're on that leash. They know that there's a, a, a context of their, you know, energy exchange versus if they're off leash and that squirrel comes and they're just going to run and bolt and follow that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and and then we eventually get to off leash work, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm, but right. we want to achieve success first. Mm -hmm. We want to crawl before right. we, you know, walk and walk before we fly. Great, excellent. Okay, well, this is very fun. When we come back, um, we'll talk a little bit more about the rocket recall and some of the fun stories you might have of, of training, whether they would recall or in other areas. We're going to take just a short little break. You're listening to the Human Animal Podcast. We'll be right back.
Hey friends, if you like what you're hearing and want to learn more, check out Dr. Joseph's book, The Human-Animal Connection, Deepening Relationships with Animals and Ourselves. Or visit the website, thehumananimalconnection.org, to book an online consultation. Thank you for loving animals. Now back to the show. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to the Human Animal Connection. I'm speaking with Lisa Wagner, and she is the owner of Cold Nose College Online Training. And her program, Original Rocket Recall, is what we've been talking about. So can you tell us a, a story of maybe a client that you were working with that had some challenges in this area and how you work with her? Absolutely. They're so fun. First of all, it's in our classes. We don't have a brick and mortar training facility any longer. But when we did, it was so fun to hear the laughter in class. Mm-hmm. Nobody was serious. Everyone was having fun. So we had a client who came and um, wanted to take our, you know, our rocket recall class. She had what she felt was a very well-trained dog, but her friend had told her about this positive reinforcement class that she, you know, she should go to. So she had trained her dog eight years with choke collars and prong collars uh-huh. and you know, all aversive training. And her mm-hmm. dog would comply when she gave him a cue, but outside of a class environment, he didn't want to be near her. Wow. He wanted nothing to do with her. Yeah. If, you know, he would just b- want to be away from her. Wow. They took our rocket recall class and, to wa- and then p- put the practice into home. Remember, all training is only as good as implementing it at home. Right. They did right. all of that. Mm-hmm. And to see the difference in their relationship, mm-hmm. her dog, who was named Sirius, wanted to be with her. Wow. Wanted to spend time with her. And yeah. he would return when she called. Wow. So to, yeah. See, yeah, to, see, to see the client gain success, to see the dog gain success with recall, but to see the, how their bond shifted, how, their, how they developed a bond really mm-hmm. was it, it brings tears to my eyes still yeah yeah because uh, uh you know those shock collars and stuff like we were saying they can get an immediate appearance of compliance but they the price of that is the bond is the love it's the trust yeah the, you know? the there are serious unintended consequences mm-hmm. and what in my brat, my my husband Brad will always say, "I don't have to shoot you. I can, if I just cock the gun, it'll mm-hmm. probably scare you." Right. Where, what do you want? Do you want a dog who's returning to you because they fear they're going fear something that's going you know going to be painful to them, or do you want them returning to you with unbridled joy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want the latter. Yeah, yeah. And so you've, you've, you know, been around, I mean, you've seen the old waves, you've seen the new waves. Do you feel like the word is getting out that, that positivity is the way to go? Or do you feel like we still have a long way to go to educate the public? I think there's a long way to go, Jeannie. I think there, there was a time there was starting to be a shift. And then there's some really aversive trainers who are TV personalities now. Mm -hmm. And that has, you know, promoted the use of aversive training. That's why in addition to just wanting to put my book and yeah, uh, my protocol into book format, I've seen the increase of shot collar training. Yeah. And, and I wanted guardians to know that there's a different way, a very successful way mm-hmm. to train their dog mm-hmm. where the dog feels joy versus yes. fear. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because in the military, I've worked a lot with the military, and in the old days, they used aversive methods, they used fear, 
And they got wise that this was not the best method. And they began to switch to positive training. And what they found was that the dogs, it was 300% more effective in terms of both the speed that the dog learned it and the, and the ability of the dog to retain what they had learned. And so they have, you know, you know, and this we're talking about military working dogs training. So for them to recognize that this is just the better way, it's it's so sad when you hear people still thinking that shock collars and other aversive methods, aversive meaning fear induced or pain inducing methods, um, are are you know anything that should be even legal. <laughs> I know absolutely. Well, here you know here's a, a human example too. We. A, a animal who's trained with positive reinforcement will work really hard to attain that reinforcer. Mm -hmm. If they're trained with aversives, they'll work hard enough just not to receive the, the, the aversive feeling, the punishment. Uh -huh. We were teaching a learning, th th learning theory class in a dog training academy when Brad and I were up speaking, talking about learning theory, mentioned that. And he said, oh my gosh, here's my human example. Lisa's father was a p had a phd in clinical psychology mm -hmm. and she was told when she brought an a home on her report card she'd get five dollars mm -hmm. my dad had a P phd in music education mm -hmm. and when he i was told in no uncertain terms if you ever bring a d home you're grounded mm -hmm. who do you think was the a student and who do you think was the c student yeah the one who was positive he did just enough yeah to yeah. not receive that Right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so interesting. It's it's you know the, the we get more, uh, we get more bees with honey or bears with honey. I forgot this. I forget to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I yeah, said exactly. That. Yeah, yeah. It, um, and you know, I trained. I was not a professional dog trainer, but I trained my dogs with aversive tools, mm. choke collars and prong collars and leash jerks, mm. and it was a an Australian shepherd that we brought into her home where I wanted to learn agility. Mm -hmm. And so I bought books on agility. There were no agility classes in my rural area. And I started reading about, oh, you give the dog a piece of food after they do the behavior. Mm -hmm. And like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I started using it with Carter. Mm -hmm. He His exuberance was there i created an amazing buy-in it was very effective mm -hmm. and so unfortunately at two and a half he was tragically killed mm -hmm. and it was not long after i had learned about the positive reinforcement and mm -hmm. i was in the depths of a depression for three months mm -hmm. and when i finally crawled my way out i said you know i want to help other people learn that they don't have to hurt their dog to train their dog yeah never meant that to be a dog trainer I just right. wanted to help my shelter, but you know, I got bitten by the bug. I started learning and learning learning theory, and it's like I'm hooked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So, tell us just a little bit about your program, the Cold Nose College. What can people learn through you, with you? So, Cold Nose College. You know, our business has shifted um, over the twenty years, about every five years. Mm -hmm. So, it has morphed into now we're working with um, professional trainers. Mm -hmm. And we're providing uh, behavior um, and consulting, behavior consulting or case consulting for aspiring trainers. Not asp well, aspiring too, but also professional trainers. Mm -hmm. And we're on faculty teach for um, Victoria Stillwell Academy of Dog Training and Behavior. So we're uh -huh. I'm on Zoom every uh -huh. day with students in yeah. you know, different parts of the world, helping them hone their skills. Mm -hmm. And so teaching the next generation of dog trainers. That's fantastic. Spreading the word, spreading the love. <laughs> yeah. And then spreading rocket recall, you know, uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. the, the methodology. Yeah. Uh, a fun, effective way um, to teach your dog to come back to you. Yeah. Well, we have, you know, our latest rescue is a wonderful dog and he has passed his therapy dog test. So he's doing very well, but he has one behavior that is not so desirable. And that is when I leave the house <laughs> and I come back, you know, there's like, okay, what am I to find here? You know, so he gets into everything. I mean, you think everything's put away, everything's okay. I did my thing. The, the garbage can is locked, you know, <laughs> and it's uh, mostly food, but he has chewed the ends of scissors, you know, I mean, just everything. So any thoughts? <laughs> well, so yes, um, I, I'm, I'm happy. It seems to be 
uh, what I call normal dog behaviors, which mm -hmm. is getting into things that they shouldn't get into and wanting to chew mm -hmm. and uh, versus true separation anxiety. I'm also a certified separation anxiety trainer. I worked mm -hmm. for seven years solely with guardians whose dogs were terrified, you know, mm -hmm. had symptoms of not being comfortable home alone. It sounds to me like your dog may be finding fun things to do while you're away. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's hard, it's hard to say um, exactly what might help, but add further enrichment to your dog's life so he's mentally and physically well satiated mm -hmm. and make sure that happens before you leave. And then you could leave uh, food toys or scatter food throughout your house. So it gives him something to do, search and seek and mm -hmm. look for. Mm -hmm. That may be beneficial or crate train him so that he's very comfortable. So, you know, for, you know, two or three hours while you're away, mm -hmm. you can uh, be comfortable that he's not going to be chewing up your. Yeah. Or well, your we've got three dogs. Scissors. They're so, yeah. I mean, dangerous. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's like, how did he get this thing? You know, it's like, he got oh, they're a They're so creative, aren't they're they? So creative. I mean, it, and we've got three dogs in the house, you know. So, um, and he's the one that I think instigates these things and he'll eat a whole loaf of bread if he can, you know, it's like, didn't realize that the bread box was not closed. <laughs> you know? I have a, a trainer friend that I worked with whose dog did have separation anxiety, but he, but he also was a food, food hound. He was a lab. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he, crawled through a cupboard um not an armoire like a kitchen a antique kitchen cupboard uh -huh. that had a slide on it uh -huh. to the kitchen uh -huh. he got up on that cupboard slid the door open to that pass through crawled through the little teeny tiny hole and ate everything he could get his mouth on <laughs> in the kitchen i know it's like i think harry i, mean, I can't believe he's still alive after the things he's consumed <laughs> He must be related to um, Ben. Isn't yeah. the client's name yeah. is Ben? Yeah. The dog's name is well, Ben. He was in a house with 12 dogs um, oh when I got him. So, yeah, I don't know what all would, but <laughs> she says he never did that here. I'm so glad well, he also, landed in your house. Yeah. Well, it's also been summer, so he hasn't been out doing his therapy dog visits at the school. We do a lot of school visits and stuff. It's been too hot for the dogs to go out. So uh, he's probably bored. Yeah, I have Houston uh, uh, students in Houston, and it's just so unbearable. You know, at eleven thirty, it's still hundred degrees there, and so yeah. it's hard to give them the physical, meet their physical needs. Mm -hmm. So, truly, if you can use um, the nose mm -hmm. and have him do some uh, searching and seeking within your house in certain mm -hmm. areas, that mm -hmm. may be really beneficial for him. Okay, well, great. Well, it's been just wonderful to talk with you, Lisa. I'm so glad Thank that you. you're promoting this um, method of philosophy of positivity based on trust, based on a sense of safety, based on mutual respect between person and animal. That's just beautiful. So if people want to find you and uh, work with you, where should they go? So, so you can find us at Coldness College. If you go to ro and um, coldnesscollege.com mm -hmm. um, on the Rocket Recall page, or you can uh, type in rocketrecall.com. You can go to that page, see what we have available, mm -hmm. and also access a free download of the 12 Rules of Rocket Recall, which is a quick reference guide I put together so people will understand the most important concepts. It kind of gives you some cliff note version, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so feel free to, you know, head there and download that. Um, and then I shared with you, Jeannie, if you choose to, um, our course that just came out in May, um, it uh, sits on the Thinkific platform. You can access mm -hmm. it through our website, mm -hmm. um, but I have a 40% discount code okay. for that. So I'm sure you can put that in the, the notes of the... Yeah, well, go ahead and say it just so people can hear it. Yeah, so you, the link you'll find on our website, but the 40% the savings code is HAC for Human Animal Connection, HAC40. Okay. And that Wonderful. that expires at the end of August. Yeah, so. so I'm not sure that the show will air for then, but we'll figure that out. We'll work on that. You know what? I'll just extend it. Okay, very good. <laughs> so no expiration date. That's there even better, go. isn't it? Even better. Even yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah, because people be listening all different times. So, well, Lisa Wagner from Cold 
Nose College and uh, uh, the original Rocket Recall. Thank you so much for this great information and for the great work you're doing and helping trainers learn how to be positive, positive, positive. Love, love, love. That's all. Well, we thank need. you, Jeannie. You do some amazing things for dogs and their people too. So thank you for all you do. And I really appreciate you inviting me. It's a joy to, to see you and speak with you again and share information with your listeners. Thank you. We'll see you again for the Human Animal Connection Podcast. We'll say aloha for now. Thank you for tuning in to the Human Animal Connection Show. Please visit our website, thehumananimalconnection.org. There you can sign up for our free email newsletter, book a consultation, or check out our blogs and resources. Our best-selling book, The Human Animal Connection, is available on Amazon. And your donation of any amount keeps our nonprofit organization providing life-changing services. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.